start off with a little bit of an analogy for this new topic where we're going to kind of shift gears a little bit. So you guys know that I'm a father. I have two kids, 14-year-old and a six-year-old. I'm also a teacher. I have two different but completely correct and completely valid realities. I am a teacher and I am a father. They are different roles. Uh, I do different things. There's different properties of fathers than there is of teachers, but I am both. I am a father and I am a teacher. I have a dual reality, a dual aspect to me. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking exclusively about wave properties of light, wave properties of EMR. On the very first day, we talked about polarization. Remember the filtering out of light by these polarizing filters. That's a wave property, and it's exhibited by EMR, light, EMR. Refraction, we talked about in a lot more detail than polarization. It's the bending of light, and that happens because the speed of a wave changes when we go from one medium to the other. That's a wave property, and that's exhibited by EMR. Over the last couple of days, we've been talking about diffraction and interference. Those are both wave properties, both exhibited by light, both exhibited by EMR. So all these wave properties exhibited by light are, are lending support to the wave theory of light, supporting the wave nature of light. Light is a wave. But today, we're going to shift gears a little bit and say that in addition to light being a wave, Light's a particle. Light has particle aspects to it too. Just like I have father aspects to me and teacher aspects to me, two different realities with different properties, light has a wave nature and a particle nature associated with it as well. Two different but valid realities. Now, the analogy falls apart at a certain point because in the analogy, you can visualize me as a father and a teacher at the same time. The reason you can visualize me as a father and a teacher at the same time is because you've seen me. You've seen me, right? It's I'm within your realm of experience. Although a, a light EMR has a wave nature and a particle nature, it's pretty difficult to visualize the wave nature and the particle nature of EMR at the same time because that's outside of our realm of experience. Unless you're literally a genius, you're not going to visualize very well something that is outside of your experience. But there is evidence to support clearly the wave nature of EMR. And as you're going to see over the next few days, there is also evidence to support the particle nature of EMR. We're not throwing away what we've already learned. We're just adding to it. We now say that it has a dual nature. We call it the wave particle duality. Now, I'm going to define for you a particle of light. We call it, probably heard this term before, a photon. We loosely define a photon as a particle of light. The better definition for it, the real definition for it, is a quantum of energy, a little bundle of energy, a little packet of energy. But really what it amounts to is a particle of light. A particle that doesn't replace the wave nature of the light, that just adds to, in a in a way that's difficult to visualize, it just adds to the wave nature of light. Now, photon theory was, uh, uh, was discovered by, was invented by, whatever you want to call it, by Einstein in 1905 to explain something called the photoelectric effect, which we'll talk about in a lot more detail tomorrow. There's a guy named Max Planck that came before him and introduced quantum theory, not photon theory, but quantum theory. The idea that there are discrete levels of energy. Quantum theory says that you can have this amount of energy or this amount or this amount, but nothing in between. Einstein built upon that 
and come up with this photon theory. The idea that light is a particle and has a certain amount of energy associated with it. If it has a certain amount of energy associated with it, then Einstein better come up with an equation that describes it. The equation that Einstein did come up with is looks like this. E is equal to H times F or HC over lambda. All we've done there is replaced F with C over lambda, right? Which is the wave equation. V is equal to F lambda or C is equal to F lambda. E stands for the energy, the energy of a photon, the energy of a particle of light, the energy of a quantum of energy. And that's going to be measured usually in joules, but you do sometimes see it measured in electron volts as well. F is the frequency of the EMR. And that's going to be measured in hertz, named after Heinrich Hertz, who did that experiment, the spark gap apparatus, verified Maxwell's theory. C is the speed of light, of course, in a vacuum, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And lambda is the wavelength of the EMR. And that's going to be measured in meters. So what is this H thing? H is a constant that we call Planck's constant. Remember, it was Max Planck who introduced the idea of quantum theory. Not photon theory, but the theory that Einstein used to develop photon theory. Einstein built upon this introductory idea of quantum theory invented by Planck to come up with this idea of photon theory. Since Planck was one of the original guys to work with quantum theory, he gets a constant named after him. It's called Planck's constant. And the value of Planck's constant will be as appears on your data sheet, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. But it could also be, as you can see on your data sheet, 4.14 times 10 to the negative 15 electron volt seconds. How do you have two values of a constant? They do. What's the speed limit on the highway? 100 kilometers per hour or 110, depends upon where you are, right? Let's say 100 kilometers per hour. Hey, everybody agree? Well, if you're American, you might say it's 62 miles per hour. Or you might say it's 27.7 .7 meters per second. Are those different speed limits? No, they're exactly the same thing, right? They're different, not different speed limits, but different units. That's all we got here, right? 62 miles per hour is exactly the same thing as 100 kilometers per hour. 6.63 is exactly the same thing as 4.14 if you're using the proper units. Which one do you use? Well, if you're using the 6.63 value, it's going to be because you've used joules for energy. If you're using the 4.14 value, it's going to be because you used electron volts for energy. Most times, you can use whichever one is convenient for you, joules or electron volts. There are times, there are a few times when you have to use joules and you can't use electron volts, but I'll point those out as they arise. Okay, by the end of the unit, it'll be pretty clear to you when you can use joules, when you can use electron volts, and when you have to use joules, or when you can do whatever you want, whatever's convenient for you. All right, we're going to take a look at uh, two quick example problems. First one says, determine the energy of a photon that is a frequency of 5.0 times 10 to the 14 hertz. The energy of a photon that has this frequency, look, we can find the energy by saying H times F. Now, we've got two values of Planck's constant, 6.63 and 4.14. One is joule seconds, one's electron volt seconds. Which one should I use? 
Depends on what I want my energy in. If I use 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds, then I'm going to get an answer for energy in joules. If I use the electron volt seconds, then I'm going to end up with an energy in electron volts. Both are correct. I don't know. I prefer joules. Joules is just as convenient as the electron volts here, so let's go with that. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times 5 times 10 to the 14 gives me 3.315 or say 3.3 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Again, if you calculated this in electron volts, unless the question specified what units it should be in, that would be fine as well. 4.14 times 10 to the 15 electron volt seconds times 5 times 10 to the 14 hertz would give me whatever in electron volts. Look at the equation, guys. Look at the equation that Einstein gave us here. E is equal to H times F. Like he's talking about, Einstein's talking about the particle nature of light. But yet, look, he's not discounting the wave nature of light. Like this equation in itself is saying that light is a wave and a particle. The energy of a particle, the energy of a photon, a particle of light, a quantum of energy, is related to the frequency of the wave. Does that make sense? So we've got the duality, the wave, the particle slash wave duality here now. Not just lights a wave, but rather lights a wave and a particle. Another example, this is the last one for the day. How many photons of frequency 1.00 times 10 to the 16 hertz would it take to obtain a total EMR energy of 2.5 times 10 to the 22 joules? What units do you think we're going to use here for Planck's constant? Yep. The joule one. The joule one. Yeah, 6.63 times 10 to the 34 joule seconds. Let's get the energy. Let's get the energy of a single photon. That's going to be H times F. The energy of a photon, H times F. And let's get it in joules since we've got a, an energy here for the total EMR of, in joules. 6.63 times 10 negative 34 joule seconds times a frequency of 1.00 times 10 to the 16 hertz. That's going to give us 6.63 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Number of photons. How do you find that? Remember, go ahead. Good. Remember back when we were solving for a number of electrons, it was the total charge of one. Now we've got the total energy divided by the energy of one. Perfect answer. Okay, the number of photons, the number of anything is going to be the total divided by the amount for one. In this case, it's the total energy divided by the energy for one. So we've got 2.5 times 10 to the 22 joules divided by 6.63 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. And when we do that, let's see what we got here. Sorry, 10 to the negative 18? How do I know? Sorry, let's just finish this off and then I'll go back to answer your question, okay? I get 3.77 times 10 to the 39. Is that right? And there's no unit associated with that, right? Because it's just a number. Joshua, what was your question? Uh, the energy of one photon is this. That equation that we use, E is equal to H times F, or H C over lambda, is the energy of one photon. So maybe, maybe you want to put a little subscript in there. You don't have to, but you could. Okay, E1 is equal to H times F, the energy of one single photon, H times F, or H C over lambda. So I've got that as 6.63 times 10 to the 18. Now I'm going to take the total energy that I have and divide it by the energy of one photon. Does that make sense?